What do you know about the UFC middleweight division? Well, I sat down and looked at a ton of spreadsheets and did data analytics so I can tell you about it. The UFC's middleweight division started with David Men winning the inaugural belt against Gil Castillo at UFC 33 in 2001. Next, we would have Brazilian Murilo Bustamante, who would defend his belt one time before heading off to Pride. In 2005, Evan Tanner would enter the fold, becoming the next UFC middleweight champion. Then we'd have Rich Franklin for a few defenses, and then the legend that is Anderson Silva, who would defend his belt 10 times, would become champion. Following him nearly a decade later would be Chris Weidman defeating him by KO. He would defend his belt a few times, including a rematch against Anderson Silva. Then he would lose to Luke Rockhold. Then he would lose to Michael Bisping. Then he would lose to George St. Pierre. Then in what was one of the shortest title defenses in history of 33 days, GSP would relinquish his title. Robert Whitaker would eventually ascend to the title next. Following him would be Israel Adesanya defeating him by KO. And he would stay champ until recently when he lost his rival, Alex Pedetta, who he just won the belt back against recently. That was a speed run of the UFC middleweight division's 22-year-old history. We're going to get into a lot more detail, but you need this basic structure for us to carry on to the rest of this. In the comments below, let us know who your favorite middleweight champion of all time is, and then let us know what your favorite title fight in the middleweight division history ever was. How many countries do you think have actually held a UFC title in the middleweight division? I'll give you a second. The answer was six. Those countries are as follows. The United States, Brazil, Canada, England, Australia, and then New Zealand and Nigeria due to Israel Adesanya. Which country do you think had the most middleweight champions in history? I'll give you another second. If your answer was the United States, you'd be right. The United States was first with five champions. Those champions being David Men, Evan Tanner, Rich Franklin, Chris Weidman, and Luke Rockhold. Second is Brazil with three champions. Do you know who those are? First is Murilo Bustamante. Second is Anderson Silva. And then third is Alex Pereira. The four other countries only have one champion each. So, next, England, Michael Bisping. Then, Canada, George St. Pierre. Then, Australia, Robert Whitaker. And then New Zealand and Nigeria, Israel Adesanya. Which nationality here do you think had the most total days as champion, including all the champions from said country? I'll give you a second to guess. The answer is Brazil. For all the Brazilian champions combined, there was a total days of 2,871 days as champion, over a thousand more than second place. Who do you think second place? It's the United States of America. The U.S. has a total number of days as champion between all of the fighters of that nationality of 1,785. The next country that has the most days as champion is New Zealand and Nigeria with 1,249 due to Israel Adesanya. But he's currently the champion, and his days as champion will rise until his next fight. And if he wins, it'll just keep going from there. So he could easily put some big ground on himself right here. The next country is Australia, with Robert Whitaker as the champion, for 660 days. Then we have England, with Michael Bisping, for 518 days. And finally, the lowest by far, George St. Pierre's out-of-retirement fight to defeat Michael Bisping, he would relinquish the belt after 33 days. This one's not going to be hard. Who do you think has the most days as champion total for an individual champion? He has a total days as champion of 2,457. Silva's reign himself is higher than any other country's total days as champion. That's how impressive his run was. We answered this earlier, but let's see if you remember. How many total defenses does Anderson Silva have? Leave that in the comments below and let us know who was the last person that Anderson Silva defeated as champion. Which country do you think has the most overall title defenses in the UFC middleweight history? Give you a second. The answer, Brazil, much like dates. What country do you think was involved in the most total title fights, including as champion and becoming champion or losing? Give you a second. The answer is Brazil, with 15 total title fights involving Brazilians. 
Anderson Silva obviously did a lot to buff up those numbers. Next is America with 10 total title fights. Then it goes to New Zealand and Nigeria with Israel Adesanya at 7. Then England and Australia are technically tied. Michael Bisping defended his title against Dan Anderson. But Robert Whitaker kind of got screwed with the way the interim belt worked and the fact that he had opponents like Yoel Romero who just missed weight, making their title fight a non-title bout. And then finally, Canada has won. George St. Pierre winning against Michael Bisping. Before we go on, guess the total number of middleweight title fights in history. Is it A, 29, B, 33, C, 37, or D, 42? If you guess C, 37, you were right. Brazilians accounting for almost half at 15. The least successful middleweight champion in history is a bit debatable here, but it would have to be David Men, who lost his title after only 99 days. But GSP relinquished his belt after only 33, so it's up to interpretation at that point. Weirdly enough, as I mentioned, Robert Whitaker had over 600 days as champion, but he never actually defended the belt because of cancellations and injuries and weight misses, etc., causing his title fights to become non-title bouts. This one should be easy for most of you, but which title fight was the biggest upset in UFC middleweight history? If you guessed Michael Bisping, then you'd be correct. His win over Luke Rockhold had him at over a plus 500 underdog, 5-1 to one odds, which is by far the biggest upset in UFC middleweight title fight history. Anderson Silva did have fights at light heavyweight in this time, and did have an issue where Travis Luter missed weight, causing their title fight to become a non-title bout. Which, if you have never seen it, and the weigh-in, it is probably one of the scariest weight cuts in MMA history, bar none. After Anderson Silva lost his title fight in the rematch to Chris Weidman, he would only go 2-7 in the rest of his MMA and UFC career. And even then, one of those wins got overturned due to PEDs from him and his opponent smoking weed. If you guessed that it was Nick Diaz, you'd be right. So currently, after the Weidman fights, Anderson Silva is 1-7-1. If we don't include interim title fights, then Israel Adesanya is the only UFC champion in the middleweight division to ever lose his title and then get it back later. That would be him losing by KO to Alex Pereira, and then recently defeating him by KO. Let's quickly go through how every middleweight champion's reign ended in the division. David Men lost to Marilla Bustamante at UFC 36 by TKO. Evan Tanner lost by TKO to Rich Franklin at UFC 53. Rich Franklin lost by KO to Anderson Silva at UFC 64. Anderson Silva lost to Chris Weidman by KO at UFC 162. Chris Weidman lost by TKO to Luke Rockhold at UFC 194. Robert Whitaker lost to Israel Adesanya by KO at UFC 243. Israel Adesanya lost his belt to Alex Pereira by KO at UFC 281. Then Alex Pereira lost his title by KO to Israel Adesanya at UFC 287. That was just TKO and KOs. For submissions, the only one that exists is GSP's submission over Michael Bisping. There's two relinquishing slash vacating the belts. The first is Marilla Bustamante, who left in the early days to go fight in Pride. And then there's GSP, who we mentioned, relinquished his belt after 33 days. The last fact I will leave you with is who the two oldest middleweight champions in history ever were. I think you'll be able to guess these, but can you get the order correct? The second youngest is Anderson Silva at 37 years old when he lost his belt. The oldest is Michael Bisping, who was 38 years old when he lost his to GSP. That's a wrap of all the weird research I did in the UFC's middleweight division and its history with all the weird data that you could ever want. Let me know in the comments if there's something else you'd like to see and what division we should do next. Thanks for coming and watching MMA Sims. I will see you Giga Chads next time.